cooling in tropical Singapore isn't a luxury. It's how the city gets through the day. When the sun hits like this, every part of the city heats up. So Singapore found another way to stay cool. One most people never see. Far below Marina Bay sits a hidden cooling network. Space reclaimed underground in a land-scarce city. And it's where engineers like Ching Yi keep it running. For our district cooling system, we aggregate the demand of the cooling uh, at across all buildings. There are quite a few of them above ground, but I think what makes us unique is that we are located underground. The plant extends 25 metres down, one of the largest underground cooling systems in the world. But going underground is only the first step. Here, massive chillers cool water to 4 degrees. The chilled water travels through a web of pipes to 27 buildings above. Offices, hotels and malls. And here's the twist. 18 chillers do the work of 27. So, conventional method of uh, having air conditioning in a building is to have its own chill water system in the building itself. For our district cooling system, we will mix the chillers. When we compare the large chiller and the small chiller, it's about 30 to 40% difference in size and also 30 to 40% difference in cooling capacity. By mixing large and small chillers, the system meets demand while using less energy overall. One shared network, lower energy use, a cooler city above. And at night, the plant stores cold for the next day. It freezes tons of ice when power demand is lower and cheaper. The amount of cooling that we store in the form of ice is up to 60 megawatt hours, close to powering up to five to six medium-sized buildings in terms of our cooling demand. With sensors tracking every pipe and pump, the network reacts instantly when cooling demand spikes. Sometimes it melts stored ice instead of running chillers at full power. If there is an electrical price spike that requires us to lower our demand, so we will switch off the chillers and then run the thermal storage to replace that. When a chiller needs maintenance, cooling does not stop. Stored ice takes over. It's part of the reason this network has run for nearly 20 years without disruption. Dennis has spent more than a decade watching this underground network. Most people never see it. Everyone in Marina Bay depends on it. The first sign of failure of equipment is vibration. So when the sensors pick up abnormal vibration from the equipment, that is a telltale sign that something is wrong with the chiller. It updates every few seconds, then the data is sent seamlessly for remote control and monitoring. When an alarm sounds, every second matters. Even the ladders are placed for operators to reach faults fast. Cooling cannot stop. For a day of use, we are circulating up to 15,000 meter cube an hour of chill water services. That's enough water to fill six Olympic pools, all flowing through a common services tunnel over five kilometers long. A hidden highway for water, power, data and waste. So this underground tunnel actually houses uh, our district cooling network pipes. It also houses the portable water pipe from PUB. And for the dry side, it houses the electricity power cable from uh, power grid side. After cooling the buildings, the water returns warmer. It begins the cycle again. 
Its heat rises through cooling towers. This is one part of the system that sits above ground. Hidden in plain sight. The facade is designed for airflow. It helps the towers release heat efficiently. With cooling equipment moved underground, across the district, 25,000 square metres are freed up for other uses. And Marina Bay Sands gains valuable rooftop space. The reason why you have all the f and outlets up there and the infinity pool is because they don't have any uh, m and &E equipment, no cooling towers, because all of that is underground. Harsha works on ways to make cooling more efficient across the city. About 30 to 40 percent of electricity that's consumed in Singapore uh, is attributed towards cooling the country. And if 40 percent of your energy use is consumed by buildings, you can think about, you know, bringing in renewable energy. But the other side of the coin is also about energy efficiency. For buildings on district cooling, the benefits go beyond energy savings. So beyond just the 10 to 15, 20 percent of life cycle cost savings that they will be able to see uh, purely from adopting district cooling, basically building owners will be able to benefit from bonus GFA uh, through the adoption of district cooling or by housing a district cooling facility itself. The life cycle cost savings would easily tilt to 30, 40, and in some cases we have seen even up to 50 percent uh, over a period of 30 years. The plant below is an engineering feat, but underground space is limited. You will always have space limitations. Once you're stuck underground, you also need to think about how you can optimize the space so that you can facilitate and provide cooling to many other buildings that will come up in the Marina Bay area in future. The network is still expanding, stretching further into the central business district. Installing new equipment underground comes with its own challenges. Because we use large-scale chillers, so the chiller cannot be delivered as a whole. And one of our design features is to knock it down so that it could be assembled again once it's delivered into the plant. A new chiller. A new ice coil. One ice tank typically fits about 60 to 80 ice coils. One ice tank generally can power up to one mid-sized building when it comes to their cooling demand. By 2030, it's planned to cool up to 50 buildings. Six district cooling networks and projects serve buildings old and new. Some built from scratch, some retrofitted. All sharing one idea. Cool more, use less. So Marina Bay is obviously our anchor. This is where it all started. This is where we built our engineering expertise. This is where we also built our operational excellence. They have learned how to operate multiple plants, understand constraints that allows us to move water smoothly in a network, regardless of how many plants that are operating at the same time. And the same system can also be adapted for outdoor spaces. We did outdoor cooling at uh, one of the National Day parades in Singapore. You've got water that comes back from the buildings, what we call chill water return in a chill water return loop. And we don't want the water to come back too cold. How do we pipe some of the return water into outdoor cooling hubs that can then dissipate cooling meaningfully you're able to provide cooling uh, outdoor. At the same time, you're able to improve the temperature of the water that goes back into the system, making the entire system operate more efficiently. Singapore hit one of its coolest upgrades underground. When we see people sightseeing or enjoying their leisure activities in the Marina Bay area, feeling cool and comfortable, we really feel proud of the work because uh, not only is the system smart and green, but people actually enjoy the cooling solutions provided by our underground district cooling system. Below the water and towers of Marina Bay, 
A hidden system keeps the district cool. Moving water, storing cold, reacting in seconds. Most people never see it. But the way the city feels depends on what's happening beneath their feet.